Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru and I've got another product shootout for you here on the channel today. This time around, I'm checking out high-end CPU coolers. I've got four CPU coolers here. These are all 360 millimeter all ones I have a few others waiting in the wings. You'll see those in a moment. And this is actually the culmination of a number of videos I've published here on the channel in 2021 looking at high-end CPU coolers. So I've done a number of individual reviews on products and now I'm gonna bring it all together. Give you a sampling of all these coolers, including audio samples, benchmarks, a pro and con scorecard for each of these coolers and then i will be naming one and only one winner but you'll have to wait to find out which one is indeed the one to rule them all so without further ado let's jump into these coolers that i have on the bench today in all i tested six coolers for the shootout four all-in-ones and two of my favorite air coolers this was at the request of my viewers but i decided it was a really good idea to give you a sense of how the all-in-ones compare to good air coolers like the Scythe Fuma 2 at $60, it really is a fantastic model. And of course we have the Noctua NHD15, the undisputed reference in air cooling. It actually retails for $110, went up $10 during the course of this testing. But this review is really going to be focused on the all-in-ones, the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360, the Deep Cool Castle 360 EX the Corsair H150i Pro XT, and the Silverstone Ice Gem 360. So now let's take a closer look at each of these all-in-one coolers. The Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 comes in around $125 if you're lucky enough to find it in stock. I had two issues with the installation. The Revision 2 model I had was a little bit hard to install, basically requiring three hands, and then it came with a packet of MX4. I really hate dealing with these. I much prefer tubes, and interestingly, Arctic resolved both of these issues with its Revision 4 introduced during the course of my filming. It has an improved bracket plus a tube of MX4. Those of you hoping to get MX5, sorry, no dice there. Now the other thing to know is that it has a very thick radiator, 38 millimeters plus the 27 millimeters for the fans means it's about 65 millimeters thick. It won't fit on a lot of cases, but it worked perfectly in my Be Quiet Silent Base 802. It may not have any RGBs, but it looks totally pro in this installation. Next up, we have Corsair's H150i RGB Pro XT. Comes in around $160, sports three ML120 fans and a standard thickness radiator. It's actually fairly easy to install because it uses the standard AMD bracket, but on the other hand, it has a lot of cabling to power all the RGB and pump controls. Next up, we have the Deepcool 360EX. Retails for around $130 to $140 and comes with three very attractive looking fans and a standard thickness radiator. The mounting system was really easy to use and I'm a real sucker for the looks of this cooler. I just love what Deepcool has done. It's the best looking RGB cooler I have ever seen. It looks great in my Be Quiet case. Last up, we have Silverstone's Ice Gem 360. The newest cooler in this roundup was released in early 2021. Comes in around $180 and has a very distinctive look. Silverstone was definitely trying to do something different with this cooler. Unfortunately, I found the installation process the worst of all four coolers. And take note, the cold plate is huge here, double the size of the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360s. That's going to have implications for performance. It's really sized for Threadripper. I was testing on AM4, but one thing is indisputable. This has a look unlike any other cooler in this roundup. It's the only one with RGB on the pump and on the fans. It definitely makes a bold statement. So if that's what you're after, Silverstone is bringing that to you with the Ice Gem 360. One quick note on the installation process, I kept this apples to apples by using the same thermal paste for all the coolers, that's Noctua NTH2. And before we get into the benchmarks, I'm actually gonna give you some audio samples of my coolers running at maximum speed and then 35 decibels.
All right, moving into the benchmarks. This is idle at the desktop with my AMD Ryzen 9 3900X, locked at 4.2 gigahertz. And here the Arctic is really, really good, along with the Corsair and the Deep Cool. You know, this is basically at the noise floor, so 30 decibels. This is frankly just about as quiet as a cooler can be. There is a little bit of difference with some of the other coolers. I think the air coolers, the Scythe Fuma 2 and Noctua and HD15, have a little bit of a disadvantage here because they don't have a radiator blocking the noise coming out of the case. That's why they are a little bit louder. It's not because they have bad fans or because they run them at higher RPM. It's simply because they don't have a barrier between your ear and their fans. So that's why they're a little bit louder here. And then the Silverstone Ice Gem 360, it simply doesn't spin down as low as any of the other coolers. So overall, the air coolers are decent. Most of the liquid coolers are really, really good. Moving on to CPU-Z with maximum RPM. This is not the most relevant, but people want to know. So I'm showing you the data here. The Corsair comes out way ahead because it runs its fans at 2400 RPM. It's also way louder than any of the other coolers in this roundup. Next up is actually the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360, and then the Noctua and Deep Cool are tied here, although Noctua does have the advantage in terms of VRM temps because it blows a lot of air underneath the cooler. In the back are the Silverstone and Scythe Fuma 2, although the Silverstone is a lot louder, whereas the Scythe Fuma 2 is incredibly quiet. Once we noise normalize the results, the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 does pull ahead of the Corsair, which is now tied with the Deep Cool. The Noctua is just a step behind along with the Scythe Fuma 2, amazing for a $60 cooler. And the Silverstone Ice Gem 360 does fall to the back of the pack, 71 degrees. And that's because its fans just don't operate that well at lower RPM. I had to really back them off to get it to 35 decibels and they're just not producing enough airflow or static pressure to get air moving through the radiator. So it underperforms the $60 tower. Turning up the heat with Cinebench R20, which pushes my CPU power draw to 145 watts. Power at the wall was around 220 here. And we see again the Corsair pulling ahead due to its very high RPM, ML120 fans. It definitely has a clear lead here. The Arctic and Deep Cool are tied. And then the Nocto NHD15 makes a strong case for itself here, nearly keeping up with those big liquid coolers. Bringing up the rear, we have the Silverstone Ice Gem 360 and then the Scythe Fuma 2, which is at the back of the pack, but it's really quiet, under 35 decibels here. So amazing performance for this tiny $60 cooler. And finally, we have the noise normalized results in Cinebench R20. I should mention, by the way, the Fuma 2, of course, is using the same results in both cases because even at maximum RPM, it's under 35 decibels. So if you've noticed that it doesn't change, from test to test, that's why. Now here we do have a changing in the results. Boy, the Silverstone Ice Gem 360 really falls flat on its face. It's the worst cooler in this roundup, way behind the $60 Fuma 2. But in terms of the best showing, definitely the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360, which by the way, doesn't lose any performance when we back it down to 35 decibels. That's because it was already quite quiet at 37 decibels. I only had to lower the RPM a little bit. So no delta there in the results. It's now way ahead of the Corsair, which it lost to when we were running at maximum RPM. And it's just a little bit ahead of the deep cool, which is a very good cooler as well. Note how the Noctua does here. It is an excellent air cooler. There's no shame here for falling behind these more expensive, larger all-in-ones. And I think folks should not be surprised if the next gen version of this cooler, perhaps named the NHD16 launching later this year or in early 2022, actually does get ahead of more of these large all-in-one coolers, making it a lot closer to the ultimate cooling solution. Now, before I get into my conclusions, I do want to show you a scorecard that I put together here. I wanted to go beyond just price performance or even worse, maximum performance, which I don't think is really that relevant. So I put together a number of different factors or criteria that I could judge these coolers based on. Things like aesthetics, idle performance, price, decibel normalized performance, as well as the installation process and compatibility with cases and components. And in this scorecard, you can see the Arctic did come out the number one cooler and it was followed by the deep cool. And frankly, this lines up with my subjective impressions as well. That's how I'd score them before even going through the numbers. And you could argue with me about the way I scored these. Some of these are subjective, certainly aesthetics is. You know, I ranked the Scythe Fuma 2 at the bottom simply because it doesn't make much of an impression. I didn't much care for Corsair 
And then, you know, the Arctic, I actually gave a lot of points because I think it looks really cool. But some people may say, hey, no RGB means no points there. So it really depends on your view of aesthetics. But most of these things are fairly objective, certainly decibel normalized performance and prices. And then the install compatibility issue, you know, I found that the Arctic was very good, especially with the new bracket that they're launching. And it's super streamlined, just one cable to plug in, but it's really thick, so it's not compatible with every case. That's why I actually ranked the Deep Cool higher. And then the Scythe Fuma 2 is just basically universal. It's so easy to install. So I'm just giving you a sense of where these numbers came from. Again, you could argue with me about them, but I don't think you could argue with me about the final tally. I think is quite reasonable the way these came out once you average out all these numbers and indeed the arctic is just an amazing cooler the only thing i'd say is that the size from the two comes out really low here and i think that's because well frankly it's competing in a different price class and i didn't really rank price that heavily here it's just one of the many factors so i'm not saying here that i don't like the size from the two it's actually one of my favorite air coolers but it doesn't compete with a really good 360 millimeter all in one. I think that should be obvious. So let's now move into my conclusions. All right. Well, I've named my choice. It is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2360. For some of you, that is not a surprise, particularly if you've been following along the past few months as I have been rounding up these coolers. But I do want to say a little bit more about Arctic here and why I really do think they deserve this award beyond just their performance. And that is they've been totally responsive to critics like myself saying, you know, there are problems with this cooler. I am not new to the Liquid Freezer 2 series. I actually was one of the first reviewers to benchmark one of these coolers back in late 2019. It was the 280 model before the 360 came out. And I pointed out a number of problems with the cooler. It came in second against the NHD 15 at that time in my best under $100 roundup. And some people were probably surprised that it lost the NHD 15. But, you know, part of the reason is that there were issues with the way that the system worked. The mounting system was really awkward. The thermal paste was hard to use. The fan cabling was all messed up from the factory, so all you could monitor was the VRM fan, which is totally useless. It runs at 4,000 RPM, and it's not what you care about. You care about the main fans. So, you know, they've addressed all of that. The revision 4 that's now shipping is totally improved. You get correct cabling from the factory. You have a much better mounting system easier to use and more effective on AM4 in particular. You now have a tube of thermal paste and frankly, you know, the price is the same. So they're improving this cooler all throughout that time. And the best part is they've increased the warranty from two years to six years. They didn't have to do that, but they listened to critics. And, you know, I think the reason is they've had these out long enough, a year and a half. They said, you know what, we're approaching that two year mark and hey, we're doing well. I think we got this. Let's extend it to six years and be a market leader. They've wrapped this up. Arctic is a winner. Now, there are two issues. The radiator thickness is still a problem. It's 38 millimeters thick, making the full cooler 65 millimeters thick. That means it won't fit in a lot of cases that advertise compatibility with 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. So you just have to measure your case. You need to know what you're getting into. So that is an issue. And then the other issue is that the fans do have some resonance. Now, these P12 fans are revolutionary. Their performance is fantastic, particularly on a decibel normalized level. But in certain bands, and in my samples it's between 1400 and 15 rpm they're quite loud they make a humming noise it's not because they're defective it's just a matter of their engineering design these are cutting edge products and you know arctic went out on a limb and created a fan that didn't look like any other fan it performs exceptionally well but it does have this slight issue you can tune that out using fan tuning software it's really simple and not a reason to pass up on this cooler not a deal killer in any way now if you can't fit the cooler in your case I understand, and that's why I do have a runner-up. It's going to be the Deep Cool Castle 360EX. Costs about the same, maybe $5 more. Often is in stock, more often than the Arctic. It's available in a lot of places. And decibel normalized, the performance is really similar. It's a really good cooler. Plus, it looks great. And, you know, I'm totally happy to recommend this to people. It's got a standard size radiator, so it'll fit in those cases that advertise 360 millimeter cooler compatibility. And everything else is great about it. So, again a great runner up here with the deep cool now i do want to mention one thing about the ice gem 360. early on in this video i mentioned it has a really big cold plate size for threadripper well i'm going to be one of the first reviewers out there bringing up this point this is going to be an issue going forward they designed this for threadripper that's really good for the threadripper folks it's really bad for everybody else and it's bad for silverstone too because it makes this cooler look 
not worth it, right? It performed really poorly for $180. I don't think there's anything defective about this cooler. I think you have to realize that there's no universal cooler. So if you want a cooler for Threadripper, get this one. If you want a cooler for a smaller CPU, like an AM4 CPU, don't get this one. Get something like the Liquid Freezer 2360, where the cold plate is exactly sized for AM4. This won't work on Threadripper. They don't even provide the mounting system for it. And even if they did, it wouldn't work well because half of the cooler, actually I think three quarters of the cooler would be exposed. So I'm bringing this to your attention and maybe other reviewers out there who have Threadripper systems will do some benchmarking back to back and figure out you know, if this Ice Gem 360 is actually better than other Threadripper coolers out there. I'm not equipped to do that, so I'm not gonna go down that road, but I just wanna point that out. And you know, CPUs are gonna change size and shape as we go along. Alder Lake is coming out later this year. It's gonna be a different size. I think we have to come to terms with, hey, you might need to use a different cooler that's specific to your CPU, not just get a new mounting bracket. So I'm just, this is kind of a, a can of worms I've opened up here and I don't have the equipment to test it all, but I'm bringing it to your attention. And I've told Silverstone as well that I think this is an issue and they are aware of it. They have a different line, the permafrost line that is for standard size CPUs. And they know that in some cases that will actually perform better despite costing a whole lot less. So just consider the Ice Gem 360 a Threadripper cooler and you won't be offended by its performance on AM4. So with that said, if you have any questions about this video, please post them down below. If you enjoyed it, definitely give me a like and subscribe helps me gives me that additional incentive to make more videos like this in the future and as always i'm ari from the tech buyers guru and i will catch you next time